Well, they recently were awarded the Jefferson Award for their incredible work overseas as well as here home in the States. And I'm very pleased to have Steve and Erlene Sellers with us today on Faith and Friends. And they've also brought along Luke Amoki all the way from Kenya. What a great gift to have all three of you here. Thank you for joining us here at TV44. Thank you for Thank inviting you. us. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead and first get started. Steve and Erlene, let's, let's talk about, I know as far as the Jefferson Award winner, winning went, there were a lot of facets that went into that, but let's talk about your mission work in Kenya. Explain to me the things that you're involved with. Well, could I go back to the, like maybe three years ago, I was, I was in Haiti and I found out uh, that the young girls in Haiti does not have sanitary pads and Mission Possible has been supplying the girls in our schools with sanitary pads uh, for a number of years. And I just got to thinking about that and what about Kenya and other third world countries. So I went to Kenya and I talked to Luke and some of my friends there and they said that that was a big problem in their country just like other countries. And so God placed that on my heart to, to try and do something about that. And of course, all of you ladies at home who are thinking about this, this is not something we worry about. Of course, we have this monthly menstrual thing, but we are not in the same kind of situation. Erlene, tell me what it is like for these girls who don't have the sanitary pads, who are trying to live their normal life. Well, they do miss, some of them miss a week of school because of it. So they're that much farther behind than the boys in their education. But well, some of the girls that we talked to this year, um, they can go buy them now, but they're so expensive that they can't really afford them. So they use them improperly. Mm. So um, this is, and they're so thrilled to get them that, um, you know, they all want them. And of course we can't take care of all of them, but uh, Yes, and they're very knowledgeable about life and they're very honest with you and, and um, they really appreciate what we do for them. So as we uh, talk a little bit more about this, I want you to just stop and think about this. If you are a female, I want you to think about what is going on here. So imagine you have your monthly menstrual period and you can't go anywhere because you don't have supplies to uh, keep that from becoming a problem. So your life literally has to stop for about a week and there's nothing more you can do. You can't go to school, you can't go to work, you can't do any of that stuff. And that's where this, this mission work that Arlene and Steve are doing is such a help. Steve, explain a little bit about now what is being made, what's being done in this. Well, we're always looking for ladies or church groups that, you know, a lot of churches have sewing groups and, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're always looking for people to make the pads and the pads are easy to make. They're just, we uh, buy a, it's a cotton and polyester batting that goes in inside and then a flannel that goes over the outside. And actually we found that flannel sheets worked really well. Mm -hmm. We go to the thrift store and we can buy flannel sheets fairly cheap and they make a lot of pads. So these are reusable pads mm -hmm. that, uh, that these women can have and reuse over and over again. Luke Moki is in charge of Teens for Christ <coughs> in Kenya. And so being in that environment, you obviously are around the girls who are experiencing this. Tell us firsthand how this kind of thing can help change things for these women. Yeah, like Elena said, <coughs> these girls miss a week of school just because they are experiencing their menses. Then uh, number two, some of these girls use very bad things like schemes to, <laughs> to try and, uh, and stop the blood from flowing. So apart from that, they are not only using bad things that some of them cannot access. So Steve and Elena coming to do what they are doing is, is a breakthrough to mm. the girls. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And before we're done, Luke, I want to get an update with, from you on Teens for Christ, but let's just talk a little bit more about this project before we move on. Um, so you are heading back to Kenya in November, mm -hmm. a few months down the road, but it's going to come here very quickly. Um, you know, we're talking about a medical issue and it could be easy for us to just put God aside and say, well, you're doing a good thing because there's a lot of people who aren't Christians who do good things, but you recognize what you're doing is a God thing. 
How do you see God working in what you're doing through all of this? Well, for me, doors are opening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even in this community, <coughs> people are opening their arms. They're offering to do what they can. And, um, of course, we have a lot of prayer. And that, that's important because we can't do it without prayer. And uh, we travel a lot of miles, you know, and there's a lot of expense to it. But uh, things always fall in place. And, you know, Luke is so good for us there. And he always lays everything out. About everything is always planned. And, and what they're doing now, you know, that they're not always relying on handouts. And that they're working themselves to make the pads. And I think it, that's encouraging. That's great. That's great. What can people here at home in Lima and Northwest Ohio and Indiana, the people who can view this, what can we be doing to help you? Well, they could help by making pads. And of course, Prayer. we have to buy the material. So it costs money. We get good support from our church, but uh, we, you know, we just need help with uh, making the pads and finances and we, was able to get Luke set up over in Kenya last year. They're actually making pads now and doing a good job of that. Mm -hmm. and, so. and you mentioned prayer. Prayer, yeah. prayer we, is a key. We can't do it without prayer. Yeah. You know. So Luke, I know you are, you are kind of just an observer. You're not the one making the pads. Mm -hmm. You see the women's, you see this happening. Yes. Um, so it's really a good thing. Yes. So the, I wanted to explain to you the idea that I told Steve that maybe you will not come every year with the pads and carrying them from states is very difficult. So I brought up the idea that we can have the machine, the showing machine in Kenya, and then we can have somebody making it. But making them and then distributing them for free would not last long. So we would rather make something else. So we are making uniforms and some clothes for women. We sell them, make a little money, pay the woman and the house rent and also make pads to distribute mm. for free. So that's the model that we think can work and will last long. So you're really helping in many ways. You're yeah. helping the women through their monthly period time, yeah. but you're also providing work, you're providing a lot of other yeah. opportunities yeah. through yeah. the whole thing. It's really growing. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> over there, you have to wear uniforms to school. You know? yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why you making the uniforms is a necessity. Excellent, yeah. great. Well, we are just about out of time, but Luke, I'd like to hear, tell me an update how things are going with Teens for Christ in Kenya. You were recently, you are here, you got to join the Converge Conference here, yes. you got to be here for things, but God is doing amazing things yes. over where you are. Yes. So in Teens for Christ, we are a growing ministry in Kenya, and the ministry uh, is expanding because we have opportunity to expand. Sometimes we cry in our hearts looking at the opportunity that is wasted because we lack resources. Uh, like right now we are reaching 215,000 teenagers per week in about 630 schools. Uh, last month we had uh, 6,000 salvations or people that came to Christ. But when we look at what we can be able to do and what we are doing, we, <laughs> we we kind of say in our hearts, then we need to do more, but then we can't do because there is no resources or we don't have enough that can make us do more or can enable us to do more. So that is what is happening with Teens for Christ, a growing ministry. We need your prayers and support to, so that we can do much more uh, than we are doing now. Wow. wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Luke. Thank you for what you're doing. You want to add something, Steve? Well, I, you know, I'm just, uh, I never, never thought that I would be involved in something like this because it's not a very manly issue. And it, when I first started out, when God first placed this on my heart, that I thought it was really a tough situation for me to deal with. And, but now it's... Everything's falling in place. Yeah, everything <laughs> is falling in place. And I've been convinced that this is something that God wants us to do. Good. Good. When God is in it, he does make a way and make a path. And we'll yeah. be praying for those resources for you, Luke, because as you can see, the, the harvest is, is ripe. The yeah. workers may be few, but <laughs> God is a big God and yeah. his yeah. abilities never, never end. Yeah. Yeah. 
We thank him thus far. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time you see this interview, Luke will be back in Africa. It'll still be a few months before the sellers go to Africa, but right now is a moment when you can be involved. The first step, of course, is praying. If God is leaning you on your heart to be involved financially or in other ways, we encourage you to contact Teens for Christ or the sellers, or if you don't know how to do either one, just call us at TV44 and we will make those connections for you so that you can have an opportunity to be involved as well in all of these things that are taking place. Isn't it incredible to hear how God is working all around the world? And it starts right here in Lima. It starts wherever we are, wherever you are, God has a plan. And like Steve said, he thought he was doing something that was not a manly thing, but God put it on his heart. He said yes to God, he stepped out. And now look at the amazing things that are happening.